What's up guys? We are making another pizza crust today. This is gonna be our fifth type of pizza crust. That's a lot. We got fathead crust, cauliflower crust, chicken crust, deep dish crust, and this one is really just like your bread-based pizza crust replacement. Like if you go to Domino's, this is the type of crust they have basically, except with different ingredients. The reason this pizza crust is beneficial to have in your repertoire is that if you're making like a fathead crust, it's already like really made of cheese. So then like you want to put more cheese on top. You're basically just eating a ton of cheese. So with this one, you can feel good about just piling it high with cheese. Okay, so we're going to start. The two major flour things we're using is coconut flour and psyllium husk flour. And if you've ever worked with either of these before, you'll know that brand to brand, they drastically vary. You want to just be sure your dough is the same consistency as ours. So you might have to add a little bit at the end. Take some out, you can't take any out, so add it slowly at the end. We're using yeast in this crust, and it's only for flavoring. We're not gonna activate it, we're not gonna have any sugar in here for it to eat. It's just gonna be there for flavoring, and it adds a really nice like bread flavor to it. Totally optional though. So we're gonna start with half of a cup of coconut flour. And we're making the dry mixture right now, so we're just combining the dry ingredients. Then we're gonna want a quarter cup of psyllium husk fiber. We're gonna throw in a teaspoon of yeast. We're just gonna mix it in with the dry. We're gonna throw in half a teaspoon of baking powder. This crust will rise a little bit. And then a pinch of salt. Got the oven preheating to 350. Now let's get the wet ingredients going here. Pretty simple here. Quarter cup of olive oil. We're gonna throw in three quarter cups of water. We've also made this recipe using three quarter cups of white wine in place of water. Both of them are pretty good. I'd say the white wine is better suited for like if you wanna bake this into a loaf of bread, which you can do. But for the pizza crust, water is probably better. And into that, we're gonna crack four eggs. So that's your wet ingredients. Just kinda of like mix it together, break up the eggs. Now add half the dry ingredients. Let's add the rest. So this is where you kind of want to check your, your dough consistency. You kind of want to like be able to play with it without it really sticking to you very much. And this is a little bit stickier than I'd like, but psyllium husk powder does tend to take like a couple minutes to really maximize its absorbency. So as this sits here, it's gonna get a little bit drier of a dough and I don't think we need to add anything more to this right now. So I'm just gonna let it sit for a couple minutes and it should be easily formed by hand. We can roll it out and we're gonna do that when we come back in a couple minutes. Okay guys, we're back. It's been about five minutes and this is Pretty much good to go. It definitely thickened up a bit. Just gonna plop it on a parchment paper. If your hand isn't really sticking to it, that's a good sign that it's pretty much good. A few pieces of parchment paper here because this is actually gonna be a pretty big crust. Throw another piece of parchment paper on top. Let's roll this out. Yes, it is. I like to go thin. It just like crisps up better. Okay, I'm gonna transfer this to this pizza pan. This should be easy, right? Yeah. No, I got this. I have to do this now. Don't do it. I would just slide it on and then pull out the parchment paper. This is what I'm gonna do. That's not how you do it at uh, restaurants. You gotta take bold action sometimes. So I'm actually just gonna like form it to this pan a little bit, I think. So if you wanna have a nice cooked pizza crust without the, the exterior, like the outer parts being burned, then it helps to like kind of make it a little bigger. Check that out. Boom, that's a big pizza crust. Relatively low calorie for how much pizza you can actually like get out of this. Okay, now to step this pizza up to the next level, we are gonna use some minced garlic. About like, what, two teaspoons maybe? Now some crushed red pepper flakes. Some minced onion, and I like using minced onion in the crust. You can use onion powder, you can even use like some chopped onions if you want, or maybe just put that on the topping. But uh, minced onions really gives the crust a nice flavor. 
This can even be like a nice Italian flatbread if you don't like make it into a pizza crust with toppings and stuff. And then some oregano. Now what I like to do is you go back to your parchment paper, press it in there a little bit, right? That's the crust. Now we are gonna bake this without topping it for 25 minutes at 350. A lot of you guys ask like with all the crust, like can I bake this ahead of time and then freeze it? This one is probably your best bet with that. You can bake it for 25 minutes, freeze it, and then just pull it out, top it, bake it again, like to order for dinners at, uh, during the week. Actually, the last one we made was half a recipe, so this might take a little bit longer. It might be closer to 30 minutes. We'll see though. Here is the pizza crust after baking at 350 for 25 minutes. Look at this, guys. It's so just incredible. Perfect like bread-like crust. Now we are gonna top this. And this video mainly is just like, you know, the crust recipe, but I wanna just show you guys a little maybe creative take on a pizza that you've never heard of before. But this is one that Mega and I went to when we were first starting dating in San Francisco, this one small restaurant in like the Italian area of San Francisco. And they have this weird pizza and we decided to try it and I fell in love with it. I think Mega might have too, but I liked it a lot more than her. So we're gonna do tomatoes. I like using tomatoes instead of tomato sauce just because I feel like you get more tomato flavor for the amount of carbs. Just kind of toss the tomatoes all around. Now here is what could be considered the weird part. We are gonna throw a lot of walnuts on. And if you've never tried it before, I would encourage you to give it a try. It's really tasty. You can break them up a little bit if you want to. Leave some whole ones on there too. Now we got some fresh milk mozzarella. Is that what you call it? Whole milk mozzarella, fresh. Gonna throw that on. Nothing like a pizza with fresh mozzarella. Then we got some smoked provolone cheese. And if you're making pizzas with one type of cheese, turn in your keto card. Front office, Monday before nine. I went too far with that one. All right, now I'm just gonna grate some provolone on there. Now let's throw this back in, 350. Now we did try doing this at 500 just real quick, like five minutes, but it burns the crust too much before the toppings melt. So we're gonna go 350, closer to 10 minutes, but keep an eye on it. Once the edges start browning, which will happen, pull it out. The pizza is complete. I just came up with that. This is awesome. I actually haven't tried this yet. I tried the crust by itself. I've never tried it like topped as a pizza. So let's do this. That is just wonderful. All the great like Italian flavors you want in a pizza. I love the walnuts. So check out the consistency here. You can see it's a little bit flimsy, right? The reason for that is obviously the tomatoes, the cheese, a lot of moisture on top, but also this, we couldn't really roll it out any thinner. So if you do a half recipe and roll it out super thin, you'll come out with a better result doing that. Let me know if you guys do the walnut topping and how you like it. That's pretty much it. That's five pizzas in the book. I keep trying to think like what other type of pizza crust is there that we could come up with? I think this might be it. This is the fifth pizza crust. 